If you are looking for some new recipes that won't heat up your kitchen, I've got the answer. We are gonna be trying three new recipes this week and we're gonna share them with you. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. The first two meals I'm making this week are gonna be in the Instant Pot and then the last meal I'm making will be in the Crock Pot. I'm pretty sure that you can change or kind of manipulate a recipe to go from Instant Pot to Crock Pot. I'm not an expert on how to do that, but there's that. So if you don't have an Instant Pot, don't feel like you can't watch this video. The recipe I found today is a vegetarian recipe, but we're gonna be adding some meat to it just because that's what we prefer. It is an Instant Pot creamy ziti. So you can definitely leave any meat out if you wanted to, or you could brown just regular sausage or ground beef at the, at the beginning. I'm gonna use these Trader Joe's spicy Italian chicken sausages. They were in my freezer, I defrosted them, and we're going to saute this in the bottom of our Instant Pot to get started. Now that our Instant Pot is reading that it's hot, I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil at the bottom, and we're gonna add in all of our chicken sausage. I'm gonna put my little clip here to hold that in place. There we go. And I'm just warming these through and maybe browning them just a little bit. The order in which you put all of this into your Instant Pot is very important. So, and you're not gonna stir at the end. You'll see what I'm talking about. We have a cup and a half of broth. I'm gonna pour this in and then I'm gonna scrape the bottom just to make sure I don't get a burn notice. And that's just because I had already cooked something in here. We add in a cup of heavy cream, or in my case, half and half. At this point, you want to salt and pepper it. I'm just gonna use a little bit of anti no nos This replaces your salt. You don't need extra salt on top of this, but it also has lots of other great flavors in it too. I would say maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of that. Lastly, we need eight ounces of um, dry pasta. So that's half of this box. The box is about four cups of pasta. So I'm doing about two cups. Now, you don't wanna stir it, but you can just kind of move the noodles around a little bit just to make sure that they're covered as much as possible. There we go. After I tell y'all, oh, it's very important to do it in order, I forgot the garlic. <laughs> We're gonna just add it in. Do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> now that our noodles are mostly covered, let's add our lid on. Let's set it to sealing. We're gonna do manual for six minutes. So you just hit pressure cook and then get it to six minutes and that's it. Okay, so the timer just went off. We're gonna let it slow release for six minutes and then we will release the rest of the pressure. Okay, I let out the rest of the pressure and now we're gonna add in a cup of spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce and we're gonna give it a good stir. Now we're slowly gonna add some cheese while we stir. I have a cup of Parmesan cheese. So this cheese is gonna help thicken everything up. And now we're gonna add in about a half a cup of mozzarella. Okay, let's add our chicken sausage back in. And that was a really quick and easy meal that I know we're gonna love. Let's eat. Pasta, sausage, cheesy, uh -huh. tomato saucy something. Very good, that should be the name. Yeah. You're really good with names, babe. Mmm. Is that good? Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm so glad. So I love the spicy sausage. That's really good. Spicy yeah. Italian sausage. Yeah, I thought that would add a nice little punch to it and give us a little extra flavor. Cheesy yeah. sauce. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna dig in and see what I think. This is a very basic meal, but it's so good. And I'm so impressed that the noodles are not overcooked. They're perfectly cooked. And I highly recommend adding in some type of chicken sausage or some type of meat it just gives that extra flavor and this spicy italian mm -hmm. from trader joe's that is the deal pickle <laughs> get what i did there that is the deal pickle <laughs> you and your corny jokes <laughs> hello ma'am did you think i forgot about you i kind of did i'm sorry i think she must have been taking a nap earlier i'm not sure yeah okay well there you go that was it have a good day. Okay, y'all, for our second recipe, we are doing a no-soak version of pinto beans in the Instant Pot. Pinto beans and cornbread is like a whole meal in the South, especially. It's something my husband grew up on. He talks about how when he was little and he would get off the bus, he could smell from the road getting off the bus. He could smell when his grandmother, who lived right next door to him, was cooking pinto beans. He knew to go straight to grandmom's house. It's the same grandmother. We're gonna be making her recipe tonight for cornbread. So grandmom's recipe for cornbread, same grandmom, she would make cornbread and pinto beans. Okay, so I mentioned that you're not gonna be heating up your kitchen. You won't with the pinto beans, 
but because I'm making cornbread that is going to heat up my kitchen. But we're willing to make the sacrifice because this cornbread is that good. If you want my cornbread recipe, I will link that below. Um, it's on my website. You can always go check out lots of different recipes on my website. It's just mandyinthemaking.com. So you can always use fat back in your pinto beans. Tonight we're going to be using bacon. That's a little easy, easier to access. But um, feel free to change it up however you want. Okay, to get started, I'm going to turn this on to the saute function and we'll let that get hot. While we're waiting on that to get hot, I'm going to dice up this small onion. I also need to go ahead and rinse these pinto beans. This is not cheese, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> I need to rinse these pinto beans. It's a pound, but you just want to check for rocks and make sure everything's good to go. Our Instant Pot is hot. So let's add in a couple of pieces of bacon. Okay, after a couple of minutes, you wanna turn it over. Mine was wanting to stick to the bottom pretty badly. We're gonna to have to make sure we scrape the bottom really well before we start cooking, just so that we don't get that burn notice. While these continue to cook for a couple of minutes, let's throw in our onion. Okay, so I just went through all of these beans. This is why you go through them. That is not a bean, that is a rock. You don't want to break a tooth. Out of this whole pound, I only found one. I've found more before in other beans. It can get a little dangerous. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is pour in four cups of low sodium chicken broth. I'm gonna pour just a little bit in first and scrape the bottom really well, just so that we make sure we get up anything that's burned to the bottom. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn my Instant Pot off. All of the burned part is, has been scraped up. I'm gonna add in the rest of my four cups here. We're also gonna add in a cup and a half of water. Now I've got a lot of seasonings here. I'm gonna leave the link to the recipe below, but we've got garlic powder, salt, pepper, cumin, paprika, cayenne pepper. The recipe also called for coriander. I don't have that and I wasn't gonna buy it. I think it's at like a half a teaspoon or a fourth of a teaspoon of coriander. I wasn't gonna buy a whole bottle for that. And then lastly, we just need to add in our pinto beans. I did rinse these really well. The beauty of having an Instant Pot is you don't have to soak these beans prior to. This little Instant Pot clip is from the Instant Pot brand. Someone sent it to me, a subscriber sent it to me and I love it. You can just hook it to your Instant Pot because it is magnetic. I keep mine on the fridge, but you can just Pop it right there if you want to. Pretty nifty, but it keeps it from spinning when you're adding all of your ingredients in here. I'm gonna set it to sealing, and we are going to do pressure cook or manual cook for 47 minutes. Almost done, you see we have one minute left. We're gonna let it naturally release. So once that pin drops in the back, once it's let out all its steam, we'll be ready to eat. <laughs> he wants onion on top of his some fresh onion, even though there's onion cooked in. Just a little bit. Don't be, don't be all up in my grill. <laughs> okay, so this has been counting back up for 29 minutes, but the pin finally dropped, so we are good to go. So I can open this up. Okay, so what I need to do now is remove this bacon, because we got all the flavor out of it. We don't need it anymore. This is a proper bowl. He is so excited. Delicious. I haven't had a proper bowl of pinto beans and I can't tell you when. Oh man, pinto beans are just good. They are. Got the 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 juices all in there. Mm -hmm. Mixed in with a little onion and mm -hmm. some of the chow chow. Mm-hmm. Boy, what you talking about? I've got all kinds of seasonings in there too. And get you some of that cornbread too. Suck up some of them juices mm -hmm. with that cornbread. That's the good part oh, right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, yeah. That's how we do. You gotta help it. You gotta help it with your bread there. Mm. Country boy is happy. Country boys can survive. <laughs> okay, I'm not the hugest fan of chow chow, but I did put some on mine just so I could try it. But mm. I did promise one certain little girl that she would get some of this. She loves cornbread. Say I'm a Southern kitty. I'm not hating the chow chow on this. Actually, it's quite nice, I have to agree. I'll tell you what would be good too. What would that be? Nice little side of collard greens right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a mess. I wouldn't be mad at a, ch at a fried chicken leg either. You wouldn't be mad at it? I would not. <laughs> 
I love you. This is great. This is fantastic. Okay. Simple I, meal, yeah. rustic, southern, classic. Correct. All yep. the good stuff. It yep. checks off all the boxes. That's right. So y'all should definitely try and try your pinto beans in the instant pot the way that we just did this. This is 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. Okay, y'all, it is the third recipe, and that means it's Subby Supper Night. If you're new around here, Subby Supper just stands for Subscriber Supper, meaning one of my subscribers has sent in a recipe that their family loves. Today's recipe comes from Kathy. Kathy said that this particular recipe came from some church friends when she was young, about 50 years ago, and has become a family favorite of theirs. The recipe's name, I guess, was just named after the lady who shared the recipe. It is called Mabel White's Chicken. Kathy said that she lives alone in a small town of Oak Grove, Missouri, and she attends Oak Grove Christian Church. She said it's a small congregation, but it's growing, and she just loves the people there. Kathy said she loves to cook when she has time, and that's usually on the weekends, but she was so happy to share this with me, and this just sounds really good, and it came just in time because if you were around not too long ago, I did a video on sliders, and we made some Reuben sliders, and that uses Russian dressing. Well, this recipe calls for eight ounces of Russian dressing. We didn't use much of this, obviously, but this was a nine ounce bottle. I'm not gonna use this otherwise, so we're gonna use the rest of this in today's recipe. This is pretty much a dump and go recipe. We're gonna use the rest of this bottle of Russian dressing. I'm gonna leave that sitting upside down just so that we make sure we get all of it out. To that, we're gonna add in about eight ounces of apricot or apricot preserves. This is an 18 ounce jar, so I'm gonna use not quite half. We need a pack of onion soup mix. The recipe calls for half a cup of salad oil, so I'm gonna use vegetable oil. And the original recipe called for two teaspoons of accent. I remember accent from when I was a lot younger, but isn't that pretty much just MSG? She said she doesn't use the accent. I'm obviously not going to be using that either. Let me know below. Do you still cook with accent? Is that something you remember from a long time ago? So we're just gonna mix this together really well. Now she does not make this in the crock pot, but we are adapting it for the crock pot because it can easily be made in there. Okay, let's set this to the side. Wait, I forgot I had a little bit of this left in there. Yep, look at that. I'll just mix that together and then we'll set this to the side. I am using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. The original recipe says that you could use a whole chicken cut up, but I am just trimming these up before I put them in there. We just really love thighs, so that's why I decided to use, we're gonna be using eight of them. And um, Kathy said that that's what she uses, six to eight boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And now all we're gonna do is just pour this mixture over top. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put this on high for three to four hours. You could definitely do it on low for six to seven hours probably. Our dinner is almost ready. We're gonna serve this over rice. So I'm gonna get rice started and then it's gonna be time to eat. It smells delicious. It does it smell so good. good. Yeah. I don't know what this is cooked in, but that is delicious. So he wasn't here today when I put this in the crock pot, so he has no idea. Mm. Care to take a stab at it? Very savory. Mm -hmm. So it's Russian dressing, mm -hmm. apricot preserves, hmm. onion soup mix, mm. and some vegetable oil. That is good. Okay, I gotta dig in. Little mess, little mess. Ma'am. All of those flavors together is like perfection. There's got the, like he said, savory side, but you do have a little bit of sweetness in there too. And you've got that onion flavor from the onion soup mix. It, this is good. It is good. What'd you want to tell Mabel White? <laughs> Miss Mabel done hit a home run. That's right. I'm assuming Mabel is the one that Kathy got the recipe from. Yeah. But. Well, Kathy hit a home run too. She did for sharing it with us. It's mm -hmm. really good, y'all. Okay, I found a piece of chicken that was like in the middle of the thigh. So hopefully. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, she likes it. We're good. Grace. She said, where's more? What you doing, little girl? A little booger. Yeah, you. Was it good? Yeah. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all three recipes. Let me know in the comments below which one you plan on making first. 
If you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you're interested in more videos like this, more recipes like this. And if you haven't already, make sure you join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button before you go. I'll see you next time. Bye. Can you hear Grace? <laughs> Grace. Hi. Yeah, you're very loud. She's eating. Were you hungry? Did I interrupt? So sorry. Okay. I swear every time I got to hit record and I look right in this lens, there's something on it. Can you see it on there? Okay. Maybe not. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> I ain't got my glasses on. I don't know what I think I'm going to see. Okay. I'm probably seeing things to begin with. Tonight I am making... Try that again. What am I making? I don't know. Hi. I know. I got no cheese today. I will have cornbread. I will have cornbread. Not right now. Yeah. I should let her introduce. You want to introduce? She said no. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the lid on. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna set it to ceiling. Gracie Lou. She's just staring at me. Lou, what are you doing? Do you wanna say hello? Okay, hold on. Come here. Now, tell him hello. What were you going to say? Lou, you got to look in the camera. You'll have cornbread, I promise. It's all edible in there. Ma'am, ma'am, it's not cheese. I'm not lying. Grace. Okay, so we're going to let this kind of fog the camera up. Froggy. It is a little froggy. Let's let's fix that. Oh boy. Some beans right there. What would grandmom say if she was here and she saw that right there? That one little bean, maybe two. Oh, that'd be awful. What'd she say? You'd be in jail if you did that. <laughs> in grandmom jail. That's right. She'd make you feel awful. <laughs> She'd say, Honey, are you gonna eat that? <laughs> You gonna eat that last little bit there? You couldn't leave for being in No, the you couldn't. And you couldn't go over to grandmom's and tell her you weren't hungry either. No. She didn't care. Well, she didn't listen to you. No. We Grandma, would go I over. I just got through eating. Right. I just got through eating four cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, she'd be in there fixing some mm -hmm. liver mush mm -hmm. or something. Some deer sausage. You want some fried liver mush in a biscuit? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> Oh, Grandmom, she wanted something soft and good. Ma'am. What? <laughs> you can't have it, baby. <laughs> I know, I love you. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Mabel White. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn this off. Oh, yeah, turn your mic off, loud mouth. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> How you turn that off? You gotta hold the button. Hold the button. You can press the button. Press the button. This little red button up here? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm.